Up to this point, we discussed two important relativistic quantities. We spoke about relativistic energy and relativistic momentum. So these quantities basically change when we change inertial reference frame. Now, the question remains, can we build a relationship between relativistic energy and relativistic momentum of our particle? And that's exactly what we're going to attempt to do in this lecture. So, we're going to derive an equation that relates the energy of our particle to the momentum. So, let's begin by recalling the following three important equations that we're going to need to use in this lecture. So, let's begin with equation one. So, the total energy of our particle, E, not including the potential energy, is equal to the kinetic energy of that particle plus the rest mass energy, mc squared. Now, E is equal to this quantity, mc squared divided by the square root of 1 minus v squared divided by c squared. And finally, equation 3 gives us the relativistic momentum p of our particle. p is equal to m times v divided by the square root of 1 minus v squared divided by c squared. So, Let's begin our derivation by taking equation 2 and squaring the left and right sides of equation 2. So E equals mc squared divided by the square root of 1 minus v squared divided by c squared. We square the left side, that becomes E squared. We square the right side, we have m squared c to the fourth power divided by the radical disappears and we simply have 1 minus minus v squared divided by c squared. So now let's move on to step two. In step two, we want to insert the term v squared minus v squared into the following equation as shown in the following step. So we insert this quantity into the following equation and that doesn't actually change the quantity of this equation because v squared minus v squared is zero. So we do this because this will become important in just a moment in building the relationship between P and E. So now let's actually multiply, let's distribute this term to each one of these terms. So notice the denominator portion is the same exact for each one of these terms. So we have mc or m squared c squared multiplied by v squared over this minus we have m squared c squared uh, multiplied by v squared and finally plus m squared c squared multiplied by c squared or simply c to the fourth power. So now let's examine the following term. Another way to represent this term is using the following equation. So we have e squared is equal to the square of this quantity multiplied by c squared. So this is the same as this. Next, let's bring the last term and put it in front of this term as shown and let's combine them because they have the common denominator. Now notice this quantity from equation 3 is simply the p, that's the relativistic momentum. So in step d, we basically replace this entire inner quantity with p. So we have p squared multiplied by c squared and let's bring out the common term of m squared c squared squared from these quantities as shown in the following equation. So e squared is equal to p squared c squared plus m squared c squared multiplied by c squared minus v squared divided by 1 minus v squared divided by c squared. Now let's focus in on the denominator of this term. So we have 1 minus v squared divided by c squared. So if we find the common denominator for this, it's simply c squared. So we have c squared minus v squared divided by c squared. These quantities cancel and the c squared will come on top. So finally, we can combine that c squared with this c squared to form c to the fourth power. 
So in part F, we see that E squared is equal to P squared times C squared plus M squared times C to the fourth power, where E represents the total relativistic energy of our particles. So notice that we build a relationship between relativistic energy and relativistic momentum. Now, as mentioned previously, relativistic momentum and relativistic energy change when we change inertial reference frames. But what doesn't change is mass and what doesn't change is the constant C. So if we take this equation, rearrange it and solve for this quantity, we see that m squared times c to the fourth is equal to e squared minus p squared times c squared. So m is the mass, it does not change when we go from one reference frame to a second reference frame and c doesn't also change. And that means since the left side of the equation doesn't change when we change inertial reference frames, the right side also doesn't change. So e squared minus p squared times c squared is a quantity that remains constant when we change inertial reference frames.